Hey friends, today we are gonna talk about, I guess we're gonna do like a mid-year check-in. I've got time and I felt like this would be a fun thing for us to talk about. <laughs> go through my best reads so far this year and yeah I think it'll be fun so let's jump in quick little analytics so I had my son in February and I don't know what it was about being pregnant but I simply could not read a book like I don't I think after I found out I was pregnant I maybe read 20 books total which I know is still like a lot but like for me I found out I was pregnant last July and then I think from July until February, I maybe read 20 books. And like normally I would have probably read upwards of 50 in that time. So in January, I only read one book, Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Meh. February, I also only read one book and I read Weather Girl and I didn't like that book. So moving on. So then March, we start to get into what we're gonna talk about now. Okay, March, I read seven books. Let me find the ones that I really love. I had three big winners in March. One is a series and we're just gonna address the series as a whole. First up in March, one of my favorite reads so far. I think this might be one of the only thrillers I read this year, but I read A Flicker in the Dark. It was the book my book club pick. This was crazy. I totally didn't see a lot of things coming. I thought I had things figured out, didn't. I gave this four and a half stars cause it did feel like a little long at certain parts, but I really overall enjoyed this. I think this would be a really great book to read in like spooky season. It'd be kinda, you know. The concept of this is that a girl's dad has gone to prison for being a serial killer from like these murders when she was a kid and now there's similar murders happening and she's like what's happening am I connected to these following her trying to figure out what's going on and why it's happening again but I really enjoyed this 4.5 stars definitely recommend I read starting in March these guys I do have two of the British version and then two of the American size paperbacks and the original covers I read Magnolia Parks these books are like crack to me I love all of them I mean the lowest rating any of them have I think for me is 4.5 and I don't I really to me these this is a five star series this if somehow you haven't heard of these this is Gossip Girl meets London socialites and they are crazy and the relationships are very tough toxic and terrible but if you like Gossip Girl I'm convinced there's literally like no way you can't like Magnolia Parks. I need the fifth book like I need to breathe. I need it so bad. These are just I love them. I I I I just I love them. Jessa Hastings rips my heart out every time I read one of these and I just never know how to recover. Like thinking about these, I wanna just reread them. I don't annotate books, but I might annotate these. I would have to buy a second set because I'm not annotating my original covers. No chance. Also in March, which I don't own, but I would like to get a physical copy of, I read The Minuscule Mansion of Mira Malone. I loved this book. It's magical realism. I am in my magical realism era, I think this year. It was so great. It follows this woman who has this basically like enchanted magical dollhouse she feels, except she refuses to call it a dollhouse. That's this miniature mansion and she decorates it and puts stuff in it and like posts about it on Instagram and it blows up and she gets a lot of followers and it follows this guy who owns or works at his like family's like antique furniture store and someone comes in one day and basically makes this comment that OMG it's very what do they say? Like mansion-esque? I don't know. They say, they make this comment that's in correlation to the minuscule mansion. And he's like, what did you say? And then she shows the guy the Instagram account and it's the mini house is his house. Like down to the furniture in certain rooms and everything. So that's them trying to figure out like why they're connected, what's happening, blah, blah. I loved it. I thought it was so magical. Five stars. It's probably gonna be one of my favorite reads so far this year. Moving on to April, I read six books. And the big highlight was reading Daisy Hates in April, <laughs> but I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. My husband and I are actually gamers. We were a gamer reading couple, which as everyone knows from TikTok is an absolutely perfect combination because we both can spend time doing our things together, but by ourselves, if that makes sense. But now my husband has converted me into being a gamer. So we play games together. I play a lot more cozy games than anything. I do play a couple other games with him. Like we play Valorant a lot, which I really enjoy. And he's trying to get me into Apex Legends and I'm not as good at that one as I am at Valorant, but I've now been playing Valorant for a year. So I've had time. Anyways, so tomorrow, 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 loved this. I loved how it just followed. This was just one of those books that just follows the character's life. Is there really like plot happening here? Yes and no. It's no like climactic event or anything. You're just following these characters 
characters and what they go through. I did cry at part of this book. It like gutted me. But overall, I gave this, I think, four and a half stars. Could have been like a little shorter, but was so good. I mean, really, I think you would like this even if you didn't like gaming, but there's a chapter towards the end if you've read the book you know what i'm talking about and it seems like people they either love that chapter or hate it i am in the camp that hated it and that's what put it at 4.5 for me it was a weird chapter i didn't like it at all anyways i just felt like i loved following is it sadie and sam i feel like i'm thinking of a different book it is Sadie and Sam, okay. I loved following them and seeing what they did and what they created, and I thought it was a really fun read. I know I was behind on reading. I'm probably behind on like most of these books I'm gonna talk about because I feel like I've read, I, I didn't read a lot at the end of last year, and so I'm like catching up this year on all the popular ones. In April, I read Before We Were Strangers. I did not know I liked Second Chance Romance until I read that book. This book is just, it I think is a grown up romance book. I mean like it's not anything spicy or anything like that if that's what you're looking for. I feel like it's like an honest depiction of love and falling in love with someone. Like I don't feel like it's as cookie cutter as a lot of other romance books are. And I just felt like it was very impactful and I loved it so much. And I read something else by that author and then I didn't like that. So I don't know if that is one hit wonder or if I should try something else. So we'll see. Moving on to May. May I went hard. I read 11 books in May. Probably the best one being Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson. I, when we get to discussing my TBR, The Well of Ascension, which is the second book in this trilogy, is what is next on my like top of the list TBR. These are just, these are small font, tall pages, long books. But these well, I can't speak to all of them. This book is one of the best fantasies, if not the best fantasy I've read. This is high fantasy. There is no romance, okay? This is true, just fantasy. Think like Game of Thrones, maybe. Wheel of Time, that kind of, I don't know. I feel like I'm comparing this to some really like big names. I don't want people to come for me. But like that category of fantasy. There is no romance in this, none. Guys, please don't read this thinking there's romance. But I loved the magic system with the metals in this. That felt crazy and super cool and way different than anything else I read. I do read a lot of books about Faye. So when I get a good one that's not about Faye, you know, it hits different. But overall, if you're a fantasy girly, even even if you're not, well, no. Yeah, if you're a fantasy girly, not necessarily strictly romantic -y, if you're a fantasy girly, I really think you should pick this up because it's just so good. You will be confused at the beginning. I mean, if you weren't, props to you, but I was confused. And then I stopped being confused and that was when the book got good. But out of a 520 page book, let's see when it stopped being confusing. Oh, okay. It got less confusing starting like 50 pages in. But for the first 50 pages, I think I was deeply perplexed. But I really recommend this five stars. Like I said, I read a lot of books in May and looking at my phone, I apparently went crazy on how many four and five star reads I had. Part of Your World, Abby Jimenez, five million stars. This is probably the best rom-com I've read. I cannot wait to read Yours Truly. Again, we'll get to the TBR in a minute. But this book was just, everything about it was perfect. She is from this family of doctors. She lives in the big city, is gonna, you know, basically run this hospital one day. He is in a small town, struggling, not necessarily to make ends meet, but like definitely not living like comfortably, is trying to figure out what to do with his life, you know, blah, blah, blah. She's like, we can't be together, but they're perfect. Everything about this book, was perfect. No complaints, no edits. Read this or you'll regret it. Five stars. Are we really that shocked? We shouldn't be. I love Emily Henry. Happy place, no exception. I, Harriet is me. I am Harriet. And this book gutted me in the best way possible, but also in an incredibly painful manner. It was so, so flippin' good. I mean, really. I, I don't even, if you've read it, if I say the shower scene, <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? And without the context of reading this book, this would sound really weird. So if you've read it, you know what I'm saying. If not, this is gonna sound odd. But like the shower scene is easily like one of the best scenes on like anxiety and like being on in your head that I felt like I'd read. And I really, I just loved it. 4.5 technically, cause I felt like, I don't know. It might be five stars. It might be five stars. It probably should be five stars if we're being honest, but I'm gonna say 4.5 because I just feel like it was missing maybe something. Billy Summers, Stephen King. Had never read Stephen King. Proud of myself for branching out and reading it. I only read it because of Haley Pham's video, but like she told me it wasn't scary. So I was like, got it, not scary. And that was my big deal breaker with Stephen King. I gave this four stars because it's definitely slower to me, but I really, really enjoyed it. The concept of this one, Billy Summers is about Billy Summers, shocking 
who is a hired hitman and he decides to take one last job and it's following him while he's like doing basically like, he has to just kind of hang out until he can kill this guy because people don't, they don't want him to be, people to be suspicious of him. And so his like cover story is that he's an author. And so while he's hanging out waiting for his mark to appear basically and for him to get the go ahead, he starts writing his autobiography about himself. And it's very interesting because you're seeing him in the present day and him writing about what's happened to him and how he's gotten to where he is. And overall, I just really enjoyed this book. I definitely recommend it. It's like a slower read though. Like don't feel like you're gonna be like, whoom and fly through it because I was doing that with books this month. And this took me like, I slowly read this over the course of the whole month. I don't even feel like I really need to talk about this, but I did read Fourth Wing. I do have the sprayed edges. And I love this just as much as everybody else did. Five stars, obsessed, cannot wait for Iron Flame in November. Oh, maybe I should include some books that are coming out in my TBR later. Might have to, might have to replan some things. But love this, love dragons, loved how we were just immediately in the story. I think that's really what grasps so many people, but great fantasy. You should pick this up if you haven't, but I'm sure if you haven't picked it up by now, you have your reasons. I read Care of All last year, but I finally got around to reading Legendary and Finale this year. And this series is a five-star steer five star series to me. Caraval is absolutely a five star read. I think Legendary, I'm just dropping things. Legendary was also a five star read to me and then Finale was probably like four. But this is such a great fantasy read and it's really easy and I don't think it feels super fantasy-y if you're not a fantasy reader. Like this could be an easy way for you to like start reading the genre. It's very just like magical. If you don't know what it's about, it's about this basically magical traveling carnival that people go see and you play a game sort of during the carnival. My brain is telling me this is like something I've seen on TV and I can't remember what it is. If I remember, maybe I'll put it on the screen. If you win, you get like a, a prize from the Grand Master, who's the person who puts it all on and it's magical. These are very good. And I know Once Upon a Broken Heart is like kind of popping off and that's partially why I wanted to finish them because I want to read Once Upon a Broken Heart because it follows a character you meet in the last two books. So I'm really excited to get to that, but absolutely a five-star series definitely recommend. And in June, I read nine books and one of the best ones was Remarkably Bright Creatures, which follows Marcellus the Octopus. I don't think I've talked about that. Oh no, I talked about this in my summary reading vlog video. If you want more in-depth thoughts on this, which again, there aren't many. This is one of those books that you really can't know anything about or there's no way for you to know anything about it other than if you read it. But it follows this octopus and a bunch of characters, primarily this woman who's lost both her husband and her son. And it's just a very beautiful, life tale. It's also a slow moving book. It's not very fast. It's really beautiful. Four and a half stars for me. Could have been a little faster would be my only critique. You knew, you knew. If you followed me on Instagram or TikTok, you knew this had to be in here. Done and dusted. Girly, get me in my cowboy romance era. Four and a half. I mean, really, I feel like this deserves five stars, but like, I don't know, maybe people will come for me if I say that. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I love this. Done and Dusted follows Clementine and Luke Brooks. Luke Brooks, a cowboy after my heart. Clementine is a barrel racer and she kind of unexpectedly comes home. She hasn't come home in like forever and like doesn't really make herself known. When she is home, she goes to the local bar that they have, runs into Luke Brooks, who's her brother's best friend. Friend. Obviously you see where this is going. He helps her work through her anxiety and like panic attacks and it's his brother's best friend and also just a magical man named Luke Brooks, who I love. This is going to be an ongoing series. The next brother or one of her brothers is the book we're getting next and I am so excited, but also just take a moment appreciate that cover. It's so good. It's on Kindle Unlimited. I bought it physically because I loved it so much. The Secret Book of Flora Lee is the perfect combination of historical fiction, mystery, and magical realism. Again, I told you I'm in a magical realism era. This book was so good. This follows Hazel and sort of Flora, but mostly Hazel looking for Flora. When they were children, Hazel had made up this like magical world for Flora that she told her via a story. And Hazel always really enjoyed storytelling. And then, and her and Flora were really close. They have like a 10 year age gap, maybe eight years. They have a big gap. I think she's like 14 and Flora is five. But then unexpectedly one day Flora just disappears. And Hazel basically spends the rest of her life thinking it's her fault until she finds this book in the store she works in that is the magical world that she made up for Flora that nobody other than Flora knew. And she's like, obviously my sister must be out there. I have to find her. And so this is following Hazel trying to uncover 
what happened to Flora. And it jumps back and forth between like right before Flora went missing and present day. When in Rome and Practice Makes Perfect. When in Rome is absolutely a five gajillion stars for me. Practice Makes why did I do that? Practice makes perfect four and a half, maybe. These are like candy romances. You know when you eat a romance? You know when you eat a romance? You know when you read a romance and you're just like, that was sweet and perfect and I loved everything about it and you're like kicking your feet and giggling the whole time? That's these. That's, I think, Sarah Adams. I feel like people who liked Part of Your World, you'd really like when in Rome. I understand why Practice Makes Perfect isn't necessarily everyone's favorite. The main character was a little too, I don't know. I had my issues with some of the writing. When in Rome, no edits, no critiques. I loved it. Five stars. I need there to be more books in this. I think there will be, according to Sarah Adams, but don't quote me on that. But I loved when in Rome. Five stars, Practice Makes Perfect, four and a half. And the last book, which will probably be one of my favorite books of the year, is Forget Me Not. This follows a wedding planner and a reluctant florist in their relationship as they haven't spoken in, I don't know, several years, months? I don't know, it's been a while. They were together, now they're not, and now they have to work together on a wedding for some celebrities. I love Elliot, I love Amma, Amma? I think it's Amma. I think it's Amma because the guy jokingly says her name like Emma. She's saying he's pronouncing it wrong. So I think it's Amma, but I'm not sure. Oh, I used to be an event planner back in 2019. And this reminded me of all the things that I really enjoyed about wedding planning, not wedding planning, event planning. It was just so good. And the cover is literally stunning. I'm obsessed with this. It's so good. I know some people have been hesitant because she, the author writes fanfic, but this didn't read like fanfic to me at all. Not at all. And you absolutely need to pick it up. Five million stars. Disco, we can ride looking like a super fly disco. We can ride disco, we can fly disco.